So I was going to do a lot of um, conference analysis. And the smaller conferences are very difficult, um, in my opinion, because you're dealing with lower level teams and and each team has a player or two that can do some damage and they're pretty consistent. But for the most part, it's inconsistent to bet on them. It's inconsistent to try to handicap them. So I'm I'm staying away until I see something that's outstanding. It's been nice in the last couple of days. We've picked a couple of winners. Now, the big games are going to start this coming week. You know, I'm talking about the the SEC and the Pac, uh, not the Pac, well, you got some Pac-12 teams. We still have a Pac-12 conference, the Big 12, the Big 10, the ACC, the Big East, et cetera, et cetera. So we, and we have some, some really, really good basketball players and good coaches on all these teams. Not all, but a lot of these teams. You know, you look down this list, you know, they got the Houston's and the Connecticut's and the Purdue's and Arizona's and Tennessee, Auburn, Duke, North Carolina and Alabama and Creighton. Now, you could, that's top 10 that I'm looking at on Ken Palm. And you can, you can make an argument against any of them or you can make an argument for any of them. But when you go down to... Just to go down to the bottom here, let's say to go to 30 and go backwards up. Texas Tech, Villanova, St. John's, Wake, Dayton, Texas. Can you tell me that any of these teams can't get hot at the right time? And it's all it takes. All it takes is a, a bad miss, a cold night, a hot night, a ref making a bad call, an injury. This is probably the most wide open NCAA tournament I have ever seen. And I legitimately could say that you could go down 15 teams and not be too far away from a possible winner. Now, granted, having a coach that's been there before, i.e. Connecticut, that's defending champ, very strong, brought back not a lot from last year, but they really are strong. And then you look at a team like Tennessee, who has this Dalton Connect, who is an amazing player who wasn't there before. Seasoned coach, hard to defend the guy. Alabama, I can make an argument offensively, but their defense is really, really miserable. So, but can that turn around? Yeah, I can. You never know on a short series of games, things like that. This is going to be really, really, really exciting. And I'm digging into this right now, looking for future tickets to some extent, because I'm not going to bet a small, low-priced future ticket because you're tying up your money on a NIFCOM that it, it's out there. But a long shot? Could you take somebody out of the Mountain West? Could you take a New Mexico uh, ranked, you know, way down the bottom here? Because they're Mountain West. They don't get a lot of credit. Can somebody like that get it? Probably not. But you might get a good price. And if you want to have a little fun, you do it that way. But when you look at the top teams, you got to say, now Marquette's got to get their Colic back. I mean, he hasn't been playing. He's got to come back. I think he got an oblique injury. Without him, they're not going to have a prayer, but they do have a good coach. But you got to have the player. St. Mary's, they had already wrapped up their conference regular season, and they got blasted by Gonzaga. And believe me, that's not going to happen. Not that they can't win or lose that game. Either one can do that. But if St. Mary's is focused, that would not have a blowout against Gonzaga. So let's put that in the mix. And that's one of the things you have to look at in these conference tournaments and at the end of the regular season. Who needs it? Who doesn't need it? Who's motivated to be there? Who's trying to rest some players? Who's trying to get a couple guys that are banged up a little bit? Because it's a long season. And a lot of things have happened over that long season. 
So you might want to get some people a little fresher. You might want to get some bench players, a little bit of more time on the field, on the floor, just in case you might need them down the stretch. Who's playing better than Duke? Damn good they're playing good. They're playing very good. So you got a lot of people here. It's going to be really, really, really exciting. I'm excited about it. And today's Thursday. In between now and Monday, I will be putting a lot of wraps on this stuff. But I just wanted to let you know I was busy. And um, anybody that follows me knows that I do very well in these tournaments. I've even had some NBA opinions the other night. You know, what happened with, <laughs> it's funny, what happened with Golden State and Boston and another 50-point-plus win by Boston, they're not 50 points better than Golden State, okay? They're better. We all know that they're, roster-wise, the best team in basketball, but you just knew that game gave you some betting opportunities coming out of that game. And it held true. Boston flubbed the duck. Golden State came back. And uh, that's two caches. That's all you're looking for in life is a couple wins, a couple here and there, and avoid the losers. Avoid the losers. Uh, avoiding a loser is as good Maybe even better because not laying any points here. They're not laying 11 to 10 or 105, whatever it is. So I'll be back. Going to have a lot more coming your way, but I wanted to post something because I haven't been a little under the weather, so I haven't been posting much. But I'm good now, and I'll be good over the weekend. I'll be doing some work. Thanks, guys.